Hi guys, I hope you all are doing well and welcome to the next video of this entire series of Exchange Server 2019. In the last video, we talked about Exchange Hybrid Migration Process. We discussed what are the components and services those are responsible for hybrid migration. And we talked about the background process when we migrate a mailbox from on-premise to Exchange online in Exchange Hybrid Deployment. In this particular video, we will move on-premise mailboxes to Exchange Online in Exchange Hybrid Deployment. First, we will discuss what are the requirements for Exchange Hybrid Migration, and then we will move on-premise mailboxes to Office 365 in Exchange Hybrid Deployment. When you run Hybrid Configuration Wizard, it creates Hybrid Migration Endpoint in Exchange Admin Center. Once you have deployed Exchange Hybrid, you can access Exchange Online from your on-premise Exchange server as well. Go to Office 365 and then go to Recipients, Migration, and here click on Migration Endpoints. Now, this is the hybrid migration endpoint that is created by Hybrid Configuration Wizard. You can use this migration endpoint in order to move the on-premise mailboxes to Office 365. You do not have to create a new migration endpoint. As we know, hybrid migration use mailbox replication service for moving the mailboxes. Either you are performing migration from on-premise to Office 365, or even you are moving mailboxes in your local database. MRS proxy will be responsible to move the mailboxes. Now, before you start migrating mailboxes in Exchange Hybrid, you need to make sure that MRS service is enabled on your on-premise Exchange server. There are two ways to check MRS service. In Exchange Admin Center, you will go to Servers, then go to Virtual Directories, and then double-click on EWS Virtual Directory. Now, here you will see Enable MRS Proxy Endpoint. If this option is checked, that means MRS proxy is running on your on-premise exchange server. If this option is unchecked for any reason, you just need to check this option and then click Save. This way you can enable MRS proxy in your on-premise exchange server. There is another way to verify MRS service in on-premise. You can go to Exchange Management Shell and run get-web services virtual directory by PFL and look for MRS. So here we can see MRS proxy enabled is set to true. That means MRS service is running in on-premise Exchange server. Now, the most important part of Exchange hybrid migration is the mailboxes that you want to migrate from on-premise Exchange to Exchange online. These user accounts for the mailboxes should be synchronized to Office 365 as mail enabled mail users. In this particular demo, I will be migrating three mailboxes, one user mailbox, one shared mailbox, and one resource mailbox. So let's create these three mailboxes. First, I will create one user mailbox, and I will give it a name, MIG user, new user, Then I will select organizational unit. Select the database and click save. So we have created one room mailbox, one shared mailbox, and one user mailbox. Now let's go to domain controller and let's go to active directory. So let's go to hybrid organizational unit. And here we can see these three accounts, MIG user, MIG room, and MIG shared. Now the next step is we will synchronize these user accounts to Office 365. So let's initiate a sync cycle. And let's go to Office 365.
let's go to active users. So here we can see these three users, MIG user, MIG room, and MIG shared. Now let's go to Exchange Admin Center, go to Recipients, and go to Contacts. And here we can see these three users as male users. So these three users are synchronized to Office 365 as male enabled male user accounts. Now we can go ahead and we can start migrating these user mailboxes from on-premise to Office 365. So let's go to migration and click on this drop down. Here we will select migrate to exchange online because we are going to move the on-premise mailboxes to Office 365. So select this option. Under select a migration type, you will select remote move migration and go next. Now under select the users, either you can select the users manually, you can select the mail users from here, click add and click OK. If you have a CSV file, you can select this option. You can select the CSV file and the mail users will be uploaded with the help of CSV file. So once you have made the changes as per your requirement, I'll go with mail users. So then click next. Here you will see the exchange server that hosts the MRS service. For my case, it is mail.office365concepts.com. That is my on-premise exchange server. Under migration batch name, you can type a name for this batch, for example, batch one. Under target delivery domain, this will be the routing domain for your Office 365 tenant. This is the initial domain for my tenant, and then it is mail.onmicrosoft.com. That indicates it is my routing domain. Under archive, you can select if you want to move the primary mailbox and the archive mailbox from your on-premise exchange. If you want to move only the archive mailbox and you do not want to move the primary mailbox, then you can select the second option. I will select the first option because I want to move the primary mailbox. So go next. Now here you can select how you want to start the batch. You want to start the batch manually or you want to start the batch automatically as soon as you will click new, it will start the batch. And if you want to start the batch on a particular date or a particular time, you can select this option. So I will select automatically start the batch. Next is how you want this batch to be completed. You want to complete the batch manually by clicking on complete this migration batch or as soon as move request is completed. So this wizard will complete this batch automatically. And if you want this batch to be completed on a particular date or time, you can select the third option. I will go with automatically complete the migration batch. So once you have made the changes as per your requirement, you can click on new. And here click OK. So now the migration batch is started. As of now, status says syncing. Now, if you go to view details, here we can see these three users. And the status is validating. So as of now, this migration process is under validation. So this is going to take time depending on the mailboxes that you are going to migrate and number of the items. So I will pause the video and I'll resume it after some time. So the migration batch is completed now and data consistency score says perfect. That means the on-premise data has been moved to Exchange Online. And under statistics, we can see the date when this batch was created, when it was started and when this batch was completed. If you go to view details, we can see status is completed for all three users. And these are the items. Those are synced from on-premise to Office 365 and items skipped are zero. So the batch is completed now. Now, as we discussed in the previous video, when the on-premise mailboxes are moved to Office 365, the on-premise mailboxes are converted to remote mailbox. So if we run get hyphen remote mailbox in on-premise exchange server, we should see three remote mailboxes. So here we can see MIG user, MIG room, and MIG shared. These are showing remote user mailbox, remote room mailbox, and remote shared mailbox. And once the on-premise mailboxes are moved to Office 365, 
the actual on-premise mailboxes are moved to the soft deleted mailbox state in your on-premise exchange server. Now, if you want to check the soft deleted mailboxes, you can run get hyphen mailbox statistics hyphen database. And here we will type the on-premise database name. This is the database name. Let's go back to PowerShell. Type the name here. Like this. And then we will use where condition. And the condition will be. Where disconnect. Reason match soft deleted press enter so here we can see these three mailboxes are moved under soft deleted state you can check the disconnect reason as well you can use pipe fl and here you can type display name and disconnect reason so you can see the display name and the disconnect reason for these three mailboxes. Now the next step is we will go to Office 365 Admin Center and we will assign Exchange Online License for the user account. For room mailbox and for shared mailbox, we do not need to assign the license. If you'll go to shared mailbox, we should see the mailbox here. This is the shared mailbox that is migrated from on-premise and this is the room mailbox. So we will assign license only to the user account. So let's open this account, go to licenses, and let's assign Office 365 E3 license and save changes. So this is done. Go back to Exchange Admin Center, go to mailboxes. Let's refresh. And here we can see MIG user now has a mailbox in Exchange Online. Now, if you go to on-premise Exchange Admin Center and go to recipients and mailboxes, now next to MIG user, we can see Office 365. So that means now this user mailbox is migrated to Office 365. So this is how you perform mailbox move or remote move in Exchange Hybrid deployment. In the next video, we will enable online archive or cloud-based archive for on-premise mailbox in Exchange Hybrid deployment. We will understand what are the requirements to achieve this, and we will discuss the entire process step by step. So that is all for now. I will see you all in the next video. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your time. Take care.